Day 33 Psalm 8-1 Prepare There is nothing in your day that will be more important than what you are about to engage in over the next 10 minutes or so. You are going to seek hard after God. And for that to be successful, He must also be seeking you. Begin by praying the last verse in Psalm 119. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. your deepest desire. Anxiety is emotional energy. One of the purposes of anxiety is to give us the energy we need to pray hard about something important. What is the most compelling anxiety in your heart today? Use that energy to cry out to God. Meditate. Psalm 8 1. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. The Hebrew word translated majestic is translated magnificent, mighty, high, stately, majestic, or splendid. What are some examples of things in this world that come the closest to fitting that description? Magnificent, mighty, high, stately, majestic, or splendid. The examples you thought of fit the description of majesty in some ways, but not in other ways. Only God is ultimately majestic. Think of the examples of majesty you came up with. What are some ways those things lack majesty? The literal meaning of the word translated majestic is that which is superior. A majestic mountain is one that is greater than other mountains, greater in all the ways you might measure a mountain. Beauty, size, ruggedness, how awe-inspiring it is, how much snow it has, etc. A sunset is majestic because that display of spectacular colors is superior to a dull gray sky. God is majestic in that he is infinitely superior to all the most majestic things we can see or experience. Psalm 93 4 says, more majestic than the thunder of the great waters, more majestic than the breakers of the sea, Yahweh on high is majestic. The mighty waves of the sea are about the most powerful things you can experience in this world. God gave us things like that so we could have a concept of His mighty, thundering power. But I think we can do more than just say, waves are powerful, God is more powerful. It helps to not only think about the fact that God is superior, but the ways in which He is superior. Picture a horizontal line on a graph. Everything above that line is something you like, and everything you don't like goes under that line. 
Most people spend most of their time plotting each event in life somewhere on that graph. It's really hot today, I don't like this, and they place that dot under the line. Then, hmm, this is really good food, I like this, and that goes above the line. All day long, either this is good or this is bad. But as children of God, we can go far beyond that. Whenever you experience something good, think about the comparative aspect. Good compared to what? Then, in your mind, draw a line from that lesser thing to the greater thing. Then keep extending that line beyond the good thing. Then make it into an arrow, and that will always point you in the direction of God. Try that now with a couple of your favorite things in this world. Now do the exercise again, but this time personalize it. Think about how that favorite thing makes you feel compared to how the inferior version makes you feel. Now talk to God about how His presence could make you feel that sensation in a far greater way if you were close enough to Him. The best time to do this is with people. Think of one of your favorite people to be around. Why do you like it? How does it compare to being around someone you really don't like? Turn that line into an arrow and talk to God about how nearness to Him would have an effect on you farther up the arrow than even your favorite person in this world. Ask God to help you do this exercise as a reflex every time you enjoy something in this world. Now try it with something you don't like. When you're upset that someone mistreated you, or you're disappointed about how something turned out, what would have been a better outcome? Draw the line from your disappointment to that better thing and make it into an arrow. Ask God to help you do this exercise as a reflex every time you're hurt, or disappointed, or depressed. Pray for others, the suffering, persecuted, and lost. Think of someone you know who is suffering and pray that they would learn how to do this exercise. Now pray the same thing for brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted and imprisoned for their faith. And now pray this for anyone else who is on your heart today.
Think of someone near you who is lost. Pray that the Holy Spirit would open their eyes and show them the majesty of God. Ask the Lord to give you an opportunity today to share the gospel with someone who is lost and that you will be ready so you won't miss the opportunity. Thanksgiving. Think of some of the experiences you have had of God's majesty. Chew on those experiences like a choice steak. Extract the flavor and take in the goodness of them until your heart swells with joy. Then express that joy to God with an I love you too expression. Thank God for five of his great and precious promises. Take it with you. Pick one of those promises and spend the day today leaning on, resting in, trusting, and rejoicing over that promise. What can you use as memory cues in the upcoming day to help you bring that promise to mind at least twice more today?